شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث من حما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به ورحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم من ذنوبكم وما يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاد فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محددة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all things, and the sender of all prophets, and the revealer of all truth. May the blessing and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon us all. Amin. And may Allah forgive all our sins that we have committed, whether openly or secretly, and forgive the sin of those who are present today and those who are absent. Forgive the sin of those who are living and those who have passed away among our family members who die as a Muslim. And forgive the sin of the male and the female, the young and the old. Amen. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Yes, maybe. Uh, the important for us to start this gathering uh, with uh, asking Allah for forgiveness because the Prophet did remind his Ummah, The prayer for another brother without being asked by the brother is always uh, be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Muslim, we need to always pray to Allah and ask Allah to forgive the sin of all fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, whether they are good Muslim. They are not yet good Muslim, going to be a good Muslim. Whoever they are, as long as they are Muslim, we must always ask Allah to forgive the sin of all Muslims. Yeah. And in the same time, as fellow Muslim, we must not forget to ask Allah to give hidayah to the people who are not yet Muslim. First, we must not forget to ask Allah to forgive us. Second, we must not forget to ask Allah to give hidayah to people who are not yet Muslim. I would like to start uh, my short tazkirah uh, with the ayah of Surah Al-Hujurat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind all of us, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ no. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ خَلَقْنَاكُ مِنْ زَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعْنَاكُ مِنْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَخْرَمَكَ مِنْ ذَاللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ We Allah remind us, O mankind, that Allah is telling us, this Ummah, the Khairu Ummah, Ummah Muhammadiyah, that we are the best nation, the best Ummah. We must remember, Allah is reminding us, قُلْ He said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, He want this Ummah to understand that this religion belongs to all mankind. It don't belong to a particular race, it's not a religion of the Arab, or the Maghrebi, or anybody, but it belongs to fellow mankind. Allah said, we have created all of you from one male and one female, from one father and one mother, from Adam and Eve. And we decide to make you into nation and tribes. And that's why we are here together. We have people from Maghrebi, people from Turkey. I am from China, but Chinese Malaysian. We have people who are local here. But we are together. Why? Because of Islam. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who makes us different in color, in race, in tribe. For what Allah makes us different, not for us to fight against each other, to abuse each other. Yeah? But Allah said, لِتَعَرَفُ The beauty of this different diversity is so that we get to know each other. And the best among us, Allah said, in أَقْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَدْقَاكُمْ It's because of your piety. It's nothing to do with your name. It's nothing to do with your race. It's nothing to do with your family. It's because of your piety, your taqwa towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, under the spirit of the Ta'arafu, it's good for me to introduce myself to the brothers and sisters here. This is my first time uh, to Germany for the sake of Dawah. I've been in, in Germany 30 old years ago, but not for Dawah. But this is my first uh, trip to Germany for Dawah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Make me from a family, from a Chinese family. I was born from a Chinese family. 
and we believe that what the Prophet have said, "Kullu maulid yulad ala fitra, fa abawahu yahwidanihi aw yunasiranihi aw yumajisani." Every child is born clean, fitra. They are born like Muslim, but it is the parent who will, the upbringing of the parent who will decide whether they will become a Jew, a Christian, a Nasrani, a Majus, or a Buddhist or anything. It is the parent. Now my parents, they are all Chinese. They are not Muslims. They are not Chinese Muslim, but they are Chinese. They are Buddhist. They are Taoists. So being a, a, a Buddhist family, you, you will become a Buddhist. <laughs> it's part of a tradition, yeah? Because your parents are Buddhist, Taoists, Ta Taoist, Buddhists, they join together. Uh, they, they can be together in one place, you know? Because to them, it's not an issue. You go to the Chinese temple, you find a Buddhist temp uh, idol there. You go to the Buddhist temple, you find a Chinese idol there. So it's a joint venture. So it's not a big deal. So I was born with that environment, so I become a Buddhist. <laughs> okay. Even I was born in Malaysia, Malaysia is known as a Muslim country. But it's very sad to say that Muslim, there is no da'wah in the country. In the early 60s, there is no da'wah. So majority of the people who were born there as a non-Muslim will not know anything about Islam. Because the Muslim always feel that Islam belongs to them. It's not for other race. So we become an alien to them. Even if we are together as a Malaysian, but the Muslim will not tell you anything about Islam. The Muslim will not give you a Quran to read. They say you are non-Muslim, you are Najis, you cannot touch the Quran. So there's no way for a not yet Muslim to learn anything about Islam in the 60s in our country. Yeah. So being a Buddhist is part of my nature when I was very young. I love I love to go into the spiritual area of any religion. So because I was born in a Muslim family, so I was involved in the temple. I was involved very close to the Muslim, to the, to not, not the Muslim monk, to the Buddhist monk. Yeah? Um, now, when I was serving in the Buddhist temple, I was exposed to a lot of the teaching, the values, especially, you know, Buddhism always encouraged the followers to be very humble, yeah, to meditate, yeah, to make some kind of yoga exercise, to make sure that you are healthy in your mind, in your body, so that you have a pure soul. Yeah? That is part of the training. To be very brief with all of you, in the teaching of Buddhism, if you look carefully in the teaching of Buddhism, it is just based on two important points plus two other things. Number one is the concept of Sukha and Dukkha. Sukha and Dukkha. Sukha and Dukkha, Islamically, is called Bashira wa Nazira. After the Sukha and Dukkha, we are talking about the Dharma and the Karma. Dharma and the Karma. Dukkha, dharma, karma. dharma, Karma. Dharma is the doctrine. It's the doctrine. It's the teaching. Karma is what we believe in Qadar and Qada. Yeah. So if you understand this now, then it's important for you to understand the meaning of Buddha. Buddha is not a name. Buddha is a title given to Guatama. Guatama is one of the prince. He is no uh, God. He never said that he is God. He is just a prince who was looking for something that he missed, that he didn't have it when he was staying in the palace with his family. Now, when he was looking for something, because in the palace, you know, in the time of Guatama, in the palace, the father reminds all the people that is in the palace do not show to his son any kind of suffering. Everything that happened in front of the sun must be happy. Nothing but happiness. So one day when he managed to leave the palace, follow the father you know, for a tour outside the palace, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the opportunity to see the real life outside from the palace. There is a lot of people is living in suffering, pain, hunger, sickness. Now, then he start to think. Now, he start to think. When he start to think, in the, in the Buddhist term, in the Sanskrit, 
they said is Buddh. Buddh means he start to think the awakening of Gautama. The word Buddh. 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 So when he had the awakening, he left the palace looking for an answer about what is real life. What is real life? He met a lot of saints, but he know that this saint is not going to help him to understand the real life. Until he has no other way to get the enlightenment except after he asked God. He meditate, he made halwa under a bull tree, and then from there, God gave him the enlightenment. When he received the enlightenment, he is called Buddha. Buddha means the enlightened one. Now, whether Gautama Buddha is a prophet or not, Wallahu alam bisawa. We believe. Wala kadba asna fi kulli ummati rasulan an abdu Allah was tanibu taqud. That Allah have sent to every nation a prophet, a messenger, that will invite them to worship one God and abstain from worshiping other than one God, the Satan, things, humans, stones. But later on, when I look into the teaching of Buddhism, to me, as a, as a young man, I found out that there's a lot of don'ts than to do. In Buddhism, there's a lot of don'ts than to do. Because a pure Buddhist will not allow you to eat any animals, no chicken, no meat, no fish, pure vegetarian. And not every vegetarian vegetable is allowed to eat. Not every vegetable is halal in Buddhism. And even vegetable, not all vegetable is halal. Because in Buddhism, at that point of time, say, killing is haram. No killing. So if you, like the bean sprout, you know the bean sprouts? The bean sprout, a kind of veggie. A bean sprout. You know where's bean sprout? Bean sprout. Any if beans, bean sprout. Now, if you want to eat the bean sprout, you must cut it. You cannot pull it from the ground. If you pull it out from the root, it's haram because you are killing the tree. If you want to eat, you can cut half of it, but don't uproot it. When you uproot it, killing, killing is haram. And in Buddhism also, you must stay away from dunya. Don't be attached to dunya. We were taught. We were taught to walk without wearing any shoes, barefoot. Like what Allah said, Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. <laughs> He teach you not to walk on this earth with proudness, with arrogance. You must be humble. And how to train yourself to be humble? He want every Buddhist to learn how to beg. You must go out and ask people for, for things, for food. He want you to live in this world like a beggar. Uh, like a servant, like a slave. I have to tell you now a story. One time, there came a girl to me, she was a Muslim before from Iran, and she told me, because I know some people, they, they choose a religion because they think the religion is easy. And she came to me and she said, yeah, no, uh, I'm a Buddhist now. I said, Buddhism? Oh, this is too hard for me, you know? Because in Islam, I'm only not allowed to eat pork. But in your religion, you're not allowed to eat any meat. So she said, Oh, no meat? Oh, no, the Zen is too hard for me. Maybe Buddhism is nothing for me. <laughs> Don't like this. <laughs> A benefit for the Dawah. Alhamdulillah. No. So, fellow brothers, in 1968, Allah gave me the Hidayah to become a Muslim. Now, after becoming a Muslim, since that day, Alhamdulillah, I was... Uh, involved in a lot of Islamic activities because Allah uh, gave me good friends. Like what the Prophet said, Al -mar wa khalili, ma the, the religion of a person, the life of a person, depend on his environment, his friend. So you must be very careful with your friend. You must be selective. But well, Allah gave me good Muslim brothers around me, practicing Muslim. If the Muslim are not practicing Muslim, maybe I also cannot be a practicing Muslim. You know, but Alhamdulillah, Allah meet me with a good Muslim brother who are practicing Muslim. Yeah? And uh, that's how I start to learn more about this deen. Now why I, I'm, I'm telling you about uh, what happened to my life is very important. 
because in most of the Muslim country today, you see Muslim or miss almost there is no sins in this world that the Muslim do not commit today. Today, in this Muslim world today, there is no sins that the Muslim do not commit. Every single sin, from small to big, from minor to major, where the kuffar is doing the same thing the Muslim is doing it. So if you don't have a good Muslim around you, you know, it is really a great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But alhamdulillah, Allah, when He loves you, He will meet you with people that will benefit you. Yeah. So when I become a Muslim and I start to learn about Islam, then now I start to recall back yeah, the teaching of Gautama Buddha. That's how I use this term, Bashiran, Nazir. I don't have this idea before Islam. Only after I come to Islam, when I learn more about Islam, then I look in the teaching of Gautama Buddha to my experience. I don't see anything that the teaching of Gautama Buddha is against Islam, to my experience. Whether we want to accept him as a prophet, Wallahu alam, because we believe that the Prophet ﷺ did mention in one of the hadiths that there are 120,000 of Prophet been sent from Adam to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Only 25 is mentioned in the Quran. Allah also informed to the Prophet that there are many of the names that I, Allah, did not inform you, O Muhammad. So we do not know, but the criteria, yeah, the essence of all the Anbiya we know is to call people to Tawheed and to abstain from Tawhud. And in the same time, it's also there to remind people about the good news if you believe and warning for those who disbelieve by Shiro wa Nazira. That's what the Dukkha and the Sukkha. And talking about Qadr and Qadr, about life after death. And that was part of the teaching of Buddhism. Yeah? But I'm saying to you why, because a lot of people are not aware. It's just what happened to Jesus in Christianity. Jesus did not teach anybody to worship him. Neither he said he is God, he is son of God. But it's the people who start to make this kind of uh, claim that, oh, Jesus is not just a human, but he's no more a son now, but he is the Holy Father and the Holy Son and the Holy Ghost. Now, the same thing happened to Gautama. Nothing in his time he allowed anybody to worship him. Never he said that I am God. Never once he said that I don't believe in God. But a lot of Buddhists today, they say, Buddhism has nothing to do with God. It's just a, a philosophy of life. But that's what some Buddhists claim. But if you go back to the pure teaching of Gautama Buddha, you look into the Dharma, you will find that he himself worshipped one God. Who is that God? We do not know. But he is worshipping one God. Yeah. Lastly, just to be, you know, to, because uh, I, I promised our brothers it may be half an hour, 40 minutes, and then we may have an open session later on, inshallah. Now, if you look into, through my experience, I'm, sh I'm sharing with you what I have gone through. Yeah? Not more than that. The, the objective, uh, I mean, the, what Guatama Buddha is trying to teach his people, his disciples, is to attain from nafsul ammar bisu to nafsul lawama, and it will end in nafsul mutma'inna. Because when you attain nafsul mutma'inna, like what Allah said, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyata marudiya, fadkhuli fi ibadi wa tkhulu jannati. When you have attained the nafsul mutma'inna, now to do that, that's why they have the training process in purifying yourself, your soul, your mind, your seeing, your speech, your hearing, everything. You now he is teaching his people, like what Allah said to us, Ya yuhalazina amanu, udkhulu fi silmi kafa, wa la tattabi'u khutwa shi shaitan, innahu lakum adu mubin. If you want to enter Islam, you must enter Islam totally, your heart, your mind your eye, your ear, your mouth, your hand, your leg, everything must be Islamized. You cannot just, I want to be Muslim, name. I want to name Muslim name. How about your heart? Heart is between me and God. No. I want to be a Muslim. How your eye? Your eye, you should make it a Muslim eye. A Muslim eye is a person who uses his eye to look at Allah's creation, to look what is halal, anything that is haram, he will stay away. So whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment, you want to say anything, make sure you say what is good or silent is golden, is better. 
everything. So this is what uh, the, the main teaching of Gautama is to bring every of his disciples to fight against your inner nafs, the bad nafs that we know, nafsul ammara bisu, where Allah talk about this nafs. And then he said, you move to make a hijrah, the nafsul lawama, and the end, nafsul mutma'inna. When you attain nafsul mutma'inna, in Buddhism they say you have attained nirwana. That means you have achieved nafsul mutma'inna. So, my fellow brothers, and maybe there are some sisters yeah, with us tonight. We hope that, inshallah, and that if there's no benefit, of course, for you to go and look into the teaching of Gautama Buddha today, because what is written in the Dharma today is not what is being mentioned by Gautama anyhow. It's been next. Uh, there's a lot of bida and khurafat in what is written in their book now. The same goes to the Bible today. There's a lot of khurafat and bida. The same goes to the Muslim today. You have a lot of khurafat and bida. Every religion gone through the process of you know, khurafat and bida. So it's very important for us as Muslim now, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we still have the pure guidance of Allah, the Quran. There is not been changed. From the day it was revealed, it is still intact. Not even one verse was you know, changed or altered or omitted. Everything is intact. Now, if I want to be a good Buddhist, I cannot be a good Buddhist anymore because it is so, there are so many changes in the teaching of Gautama now. No one knows what is the real teaching of Gautama Buddha anymore. The same thing goes to Jesus. But we Muslim. We have been blessed by Allah. You have the Quran, there's intact, and you have the Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, where you don't have to refer to any other books anymore. But still, until today, I feel very strange. Yeah, if a, 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 a good Buddhist wants to be a real Buddhist, a pure he can't be anymore. Because the teaching is not more pure. A good a Christian, or they say they want to follow the teaching of Jesus, they cannot anymore. Because the pure Bible is no more there. Now, if a person wants to be a Muslim, it's so easy. The pure teaching of Islam exists until today. But why the Muslim until today still live you know, so far away from the pure teaching of Islam? Why when the Muslim, when they say something, when they want to do something, they do not refer it back to what Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu said? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ عَمْرُ عَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْقِيَارَةُ مِنْ عَمْرِهِمْ وَمَا يَعْسِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ دَلَّ دَلَّ مُبِينَ A true believer, male or female, if Allah and the Prophet have decided something for you, when Allah have made a decision and the Prophet have said something, do this, that is final. You cannot say to Somebody who tell you what Allah and the Prophet say is okay, I know this is called Allah, I know this is from the Hadith, but you know, I want to ask my Sheikh, you know, I want to ask my Imam and see what he say. If my Imam say it's okay, that one no problem, you know, you know, of course it's not been done in the time of the Prophet, but this is Bida Hasana Malaysia, Nauzubillah, what is going on? Whoever do that, Allah said, Fakab Dalla Dalala Mubina, you are no more in the right way. Now, the Muslim, if they turn away from the real teacher of Islam, they are the worst people. Why? Because the pure teacher of Islam still exists until today. I feel very proud. I feel very blessed. Because if I want to, I, am, I was a Christian before. If I want to be a real follower of Jesus, I can't be anymore. Because you do not know what is written in the Bible today. Most of the Bible talk about Mark, Matthew, Leo, and John, and also Paul. Who are these people? You know? You ask them, where is the word of God? They have, do not know. Where is the word of Jesus? They also do not know. At least we in the, the Muslim, we have the Quran, is Kalam Allah. Nothing from Prophet Muhammad Everything Kalam Allah. When the Prophet said, it's in the Hadith, not in the Quran. You see, we are so blessed. We have these two. Like what the Prophet said, Tarak Tufiqa Amran. Lan tadillu ma tamaksaktum bihi, bihima. Amran bayinan kitab Allah wa sunnatu rasul. I have nothing to leave behind except two. If you hold fast to these two, this clear sign, you will never, never turn astray. This is the promise from Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And it's so sad. So sad that what the Prophet warned us is very, very true. The Prophet said, مَنْ يَئِشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا قَثِيرًا فَسَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا قَثِيرًا 
فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المحدي من بعدي إلى آخر حديث ذاك الله. Lastly, brothers and sisters, inshallah. My little reminder, advice, because I have been a Muslim for more than almost what 1968 to now, 42 years. Yes, 42 years. 42 years. So, so I'm I'm your brother for 42 years now. Alhamdulillah. And I feel that we have an amana to carry on. Because we know that our Prophet وسلم, is the Khatam al Nabiyin, the seal of our Prophet, no more Prophet after him. So the mission of all the Prophet is upon us. We are responsible to carry out this mission. So da'wah is wajib upon all Muslim. Even there are some scholars say, no, it's fardu qifaya, as long as there's a group of people based on the ayat, you know, wartakum minkum ummah. But as an individual, it is wajib for a Muslim to practice their deen because through our akhlaq, through our good example, it is also a means of da'wah. If you be a very good Muslim wherever you go, then you can be yeah, a source of da'wah. A da'wah is better by da'wah bilhal than da'wah bilisan, through example. Now, before you want to talk about da'wah, you must accept the fact, number one, that this God that we believe, Allah, He is Rabbul Alameen. Rabbu li all the creation. He is the creator of everything. We cannot say that Allah is my God, but it's not His God. No. Allah is the God of everything. Even shaitan know who is Allah. Shaitan is the one who mislead the people. He also know who is Allah. So we must accept that fact, like what the Prophet said to his Ummah in Khutbatul Wida, Ayyuhan Nas, Inna Rabbakum Wahid, Wa Inna Abakum Wahid, Wa Kulukum in Adam, Wa Adam in Turab, Ila Akhri Hadith, telling us, we must believe, we must accept that Allah is the God for everything. So we must bring Allah to the people. We must call the world and the people back to Allah. We cannot keep Allah to ourselves anymore, because it belongs to everybody. And Islam belongs to everybody because Islam is the religion of Allah, not your religion, not the religion of the Maghribi brother, not the religion of the Saudis or the Pakistani or the Turks. It's the religion of Allah. In the deen and Allah al-Islam, we are all Muslim followers. And also, don't forget that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is not a prophet to the Arab because Allah said, "Qul ayyuhan nas inni Rasulullah ilaykum jamia." And Allah said, "Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin." Even Prophet Muhammad is sent for. The world, for the universe. And he was sent for all mankind. Where the early prophet was sent to a particular nation. Libani Israel, li qawmihi. But Prophet Muhammad, li nasi jami'a. It's very important for you and me to talk to your friend who are not yet Muslim. My brother, do you know who is Prophet Muhammad? He do not know. Oh, your prophet. No, no, no. He is also your prophet. The only thing because you don't know him. That's why you don't accept him. I know him. I accept him. Now I want to tell you about him. It's time for you to tell your friend. Tell your neighbor. The same go to him and say, Do you know who is Allah? Do you know what is Islam? They do not know. So who is the one who stopped people from coming to Islam? It's we. We fail to carry out this mission. So it's no time for us to rest anymore. No time for us to keep on sleeping. Huh? It's not my duty. It's the duty of brother here. He is he here dying. Khalas. He will kill. Khalas. No. No. You think when you die, if Allah asks you about your sins, it's okay. It's Talk to my Imam. You know, no. he will, he will, uh, he will uh, help me. Inshallah. No, in the day of judgment, Wala taziru wa ziratan wizra ukhra. Wa alaysa lil insan illa ma saa. Everybody will be asked by Allah on his individual action. Everybody must do something for Allah before it's too late, brother. I know this. My father died as a non-Muslim because he did not know any of Islam. Because I also do not know anything about Islam. When I was 62, when I was six, in the year 62, 64, 66, I do not know anything about Islam. Only 68, I came to know about Islam. And also not because a Muslim come and tell me about Islam. No. When I became a Muslim, you know what happened to my Muslim friend? They got shocked. You become a Muslim? Why? Why? Why you become a Muslim? <laughs> they got shocked that I become a Muslim. They do not understand why I want to be a Muslim. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Nobody welcomed me. Welcome to Islam. Today, Alhamdulillah, 
and everybody become Muslim, we all will open our arm, open our heart, welcome them. At my time, nobody will open his arm. Nobody show that he's happy with me. Oh, you make, oh, are you sure you make a wrong move? Maybe they are thinking of leaving Islam and then coming to Islam. Can you imagine what's happening, brother? When Islam is so beautiful, the religion of Allah for all mankind, the religion, the only religion can unite all human hearts, all race, all tribe, all colors, is Islam. So may Allah help us, brother. May Allah help us, sister. Please, you have your friend who is close to you. Tell him about Islam before it's too late. Tell him before Allah is going to ask you. Allah is going to ask you why you have a friend who are not yet Muslim and you let him die as a non-Muslim. But if you have conveyed the message, Our duty is to convey. The rest leave it to Allah. In the daytime, you make da'wah. At night, you make du'a. Oh Allah, I've done my best. Open the heart of my friend. Give him hidayah. At least it is done.